2023 Sunbelt Headlines, Part 4. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz, also hosting afternoons on 103.3 The Goat in Lafayette, Louisiana. We're getting ready to head to uh, SEC Media Days and Sunbelt Media Days following that. So we're looking forward to, uh, to having that and kind of the unofficial start of football season are these media days. We've had some pretty good uh, returns on uh, these, uh, what I'd say, preview to the previews. Uh, these uh, these headlines, potential headlines for the 2023 season. Today we have Marshall, App State, and JMU. So let's get right into it. And these all three kind of, you know, who's the quarterback type of deal uh, moving forward. All right, so Marshall quarterback, is it Fancher or Pennington? Obviously there's a uh, an affection for anybody named Pennington at Marshall and Cole is the one sitting there, Chad's son, obviously. I believe Chad's gone back and is part of that community, and they're waiting for Cole Pennington to get a shot. But Cam Fancher, a freshman last year, did pretty well, led them to a bowl victory, just wasn't necessarily very pretty, right? He runs a lot, uh, not the most prolific of all passers, but he wins because the defense was really, really good. And so we'll see who that's going to be. Now, it turns out, Cam Fancher is coming to Sunbelt Media Days in New Orleans. So that would give you a hat tip to, you know, think that maybe he's the guy at least to start uh, the season. All right. So it appears Charles Huff is going with a little bit more experience or the guy who won last year. We'll see if he can take it to that next level. Because again, even with Troy and Marshall, one, two defensively, uh, are they going to be able to repeat that? Uh, And, you know, are they going to be able to stop teams, you know, from basically scoring a lot of points, whereas maybe we can win with, you know, 21 or, you know, 20, 21, 24 points. And usually that's not the case in the Sun Belt. Usually, you know, you need to put up four or five touchdowns to get victories. And Marshall and Troy were really good, really good defensively uh, last season. Uh, you just need a little bit more consistency, a little bit more explosiveness from their quarterbacks at the same time, limiting mistakes. Can't turn the ball over. Can't take sacks. Uh, yada, yada, yada. All right. So you get Marshall, uh, Cam Fancher, or Cole Pennington. That is number one headline. Number two headline, Rasheen Ali carrying the load. All right. The freshman phenom from a couple of years ago, right? Like led the nation in rushing touchdowns among the league, among the nation's leaders. And then, Honestly, you know, because we never got an official statement in 2023, we thought it was a, I did, I don't know about we, but I thought there were um, mental health issues when it was really a physical injury that he just wanted quiet. And so he was able to come back, uh, split the load, but now we'll see if he is the guy. He can be the guy. He's one of those guys that can be the guy. That's not usually the way it's done these days in college or pro football. You usually very rarely see somebody with more than 20 carries on a regular basis. I think LaDainian Webb for South Alabama had that a couple of times at the end of the ball game, just kind of putting teams away. But even he splits the carries throughout the game. And so we'll see if Rasheen Ali can revert back to form his freshman year. Good to see him back on the field last year. Uh, we'll see if Marshall wants to lean on him a little bit to be the lead back. And we'll see if he does get 20 to 25 carries uh, a ball game. All right, so now we got those two headlines. And then the obvious headline, another obvious headline is because they are so good, you know, can Marshall overtake JMU and Coastal Carolina? Just based on, uh, just based on the history and what we saw last year, you know, Coastal and JMU are the two best teams. Uh, Marshall was right behind them. Uh, Coastal bringing back Grayson McCall, bringing in a new coach, Tim Beck. James Madison uh, with leading the way is Kurt Signetti, but now you got to replace prolific quarterback Todd Centeno. And so can Marshall 
get to that level, right? There's a little delineation between the top uh, uh, of the East and the bottom, at least last year, right? The top three teams all had winning records. The bottom three did not, or the bottom four did not. App Georgia Southern, Georgia State Old Dominion all had losing records. Uh, I happen to think that there's going to be a learning curve for Coastal Carolina. We'll see instituting a new offense and trying to teach uh, an old dog new tricks, if you will. Sorry, Grayson, didn't mean you call you old, but you were really effective in Jamie Chadwell's offense. Now you're going to be running a pro-style offense. James Madison breaking in a new QB. Maybe Marshall has a little advantage as the quarterback's going to be running the system that he had already known. And so we'll see if Marshall, who just one game short, and then had that little blip in there right during the season, they lost, what was it, the defensive line coach? No, maybe it was the offensive line coach last year, right after they beat Notre Dame. And so they sort of took it on the chin last season, and then they had a tough loss, uh, admittedly, against uh, the Cajuns. They were in that game, and they had a foolish penalty, a mental mistake penalty, where they lined up. Uh, over the center on a punt, and instead of getting the ball back, they gave it back to the Cajuns, and the Cajuns went on to win that football game. That one play absolutely changed the outcome of that ball game uh, in favor of the Cajuns. So you do have some some potential there for Marshall. Certainly, they're going to be picked high, you know, in the division. Are they going to be picked over Coastal, over James Madison? They finished third last year. Uh, will they do better than that? because they certainly have the potential, and we'll see if Coastal Carolina comes down a notch. We'll see how that works out. You know, Tim Beck, for all his experience, is, you know, first-time head coach. So that's, that's going to be something that he has to learn on the fly, right? You can have all the experience as being a position coach, an offensive line coach, or a defensive coach in his case. Or no, he's an offensive coach. An offensive coordinator – but now you're in charge of the whole thing. I'm sure he's been planning on this for a long time, uh, coming a little bit later in his career than many, but most likely uh, he's going to do good. We'll see how, how good good is for him at, at Coastal. So that, I think that gives Marshall a little bit of an opening in the East. All right, up next, App State. QB who? We'll do that next, right after we tell you, about FanDuel and what a great opportunity to get involved in FanDuel right now. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over under to who you think is going to be hitting the first home run all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Uh, this was the time of the year back in the day when I was doing baseball that I loved it because it was basically all baseball. I know the world has changed a little bit with everything that goes on uh, with football and this is, you know, mostly a college football podcast, but I really enjoyed, uh, you know, June, July, and August because it really was down to baseball. Although that's just, it's not the case anymore. We get, we get all the sports these days uh, with the excess uh, that we have. All right, now let's talk about App State. We're doing Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. It is the 2023 headlines, and we're going with QB Who. App State has been notorious, if you want to use that word, for having QBs that last forever. They have had three quarterbacks in the last nine seasons. <laughs> Taylor Lamb was a QB for four years. Zach Thomas was a QB for three years. And Chase Bryce has been the quarterback for the last two years. Not knowing who comes in off the bench, you know, with injuries or anything along those lines. But the Raging Cajuns played three quarterbacks last season. <laughs> App State has had three quarterbacks for a decade. And so who's going to be the next guy up? You have redshirt freshman Ryan Berger. You have junior college transfer Joey Aguilar. David Hernandez, a walk-on. He was just, I mean, a legitimate walk-on. He was just a student at App State, tried out, made the team. 
our lads, take it for what it's worth, ourlads.com has him third on the depth chart with true freshman Mason McHugh uh, fourth. So most likely it's going to be another one of those guys, redshirt freshman Ryan Berger, who's going to be at App State for what's going to feel like 18 seasons uh, when it really, really will be three seasons. But you just don't get that very much, right? You don't see the Bo Nixes. He's a five-year starter. I know he's at his second school, but you just don't see that very often. South Alabama is fortunate to have Carter Bradley back for two. You know, I'm not sure in my time. Since 2019, this is the first time I think App State is known for having those veteran quarterbacks, and we'll see if Sean Elliott gives – Ryan Berger, the keys to the car, so to speak, and breaks in the redshirt freshman. And then, you know, look not only looking at the immediacy, but looking at the long term uh, as well uh, for uh, App State. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see. Again, our lads has Ryan Berger as uh, the uh, starting quarterback for uh, App State. All right. New D.C., less points. They brought in a new defensive coordinator. The defense for App State wasn't quite as bad as maybe it was made out to be. Really good offensively. They were fifth overall in defense, which means total yards allowed. All right. Uh, they were ninth in points allowed, so that didn't really translate, and that may have something to do with the uh, stats we're going to give you now. So they second in, second in points allowed 30, or second in points scored 35. Ninth in points allowed 27. That's not awful. That's not awful. Uh, but they they allowed the second fewest sacks. That's how you score 35 points. But they were eighth in the in the conference in getting to the quarterback, and 12 out of 14 with only seven interceptions. So that's maybe why they need a little bit more aggressive offense or defense. They're bringing in a, f- a former position coach, uh, Scott Sloan. Uh, he was at App State. He's been at Georgia Southern. He was at Army. But they brought in him. Uh, brought him in. I'm going to guess to be a little bit more aggressive, uh, put more pressure on opposing offenses, cause more turnovers. I, again, I don't think a super genius to figure out that is the biggest determination in who wins ball games. Generally speaking, not all the time. It's not 100, but most of the time, the team that commits more turnovers ends up losing. And so, put on put more pressure on the opposing offenses. And taking less pressure, taking pressure off of the defense is, or of the offense is going to help. So new D.C., less points. All right. We'll see uh, if that is the case for uh, App State. I think that's going to be a good situation for the Mountaineers. They got, again, they get JMU and Marshall uh, in their division. They did get ODU, who is struggling a little bit. But, boy, the East bringing in those new teams did get um, a little bit, a little bit more difficult uh, last season. And certainly uh, moving forward when two of the best, two of the, the two new teams are two of the best in the division. All right. All right. So those are a couple of, those are a couple of the headlines for uh, App State. And the other one is, can they bounce back from last year? It was a disappointing season. They had a roller coaster ride, uh, beating uh, A&M and a Hail Mary, beating Troy. They had college game day uh, in lovely Boone, North Carolina. And then they kind of blanked the bed, <laughs> at, at, you know, towards the end of, uh, end of the season. They were really lacking consistency in the defense didn't play nearly as well as they had hoped for. Uh, they had that ridiculous game, what, 63-61 against Carolina. And, you know, Bryce missed an open guy to tie the game up uh, for the two-point conversion. So uh, it could have been one of those seasons. They were sitting pretty and then, you know, faltered uh, down the stretch. They just did not play well down the stretch. So they're looking for a bounce-back season, and that's not going to be easy when, you know, major rival Coastal is still pretty good, Marshall's pretty good, and JMU. Uh, is still pretty good. All right. So those are our headlines for App State. When we come back, JMU still holding a grudge, deservedly. We'll do that when we come back on Locked on Sunbelt. Thanks so much for continuing to support Locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. The channel continues to grow. I think we're, we're going to be a little bit close 
of our goal of 500 uh, before the season. So please spread the word. Uh, it's a big help uh, if we can do that. And the more people are saying, you know, I, I just found this. So it really helps me out, uh, helps out the channel. We're looking to get, again, we'll talk to the coaches at some about media days, set it up. So maybe we can get all the coaches or most of them anyways, to preview uh, the upcoming season and, and talk about their teams. The idea is to get them, before the season so if we do get them during the season we can react and question you know what went well what's surprising what's been disappointing that could be anything well we thought they would be better uh, you know we've sustained some injuries i'm one of those guys that thinks you know those are reasons not excuses uh, sometimes it's uh, their excuses but sometimes you know if the backup quarterback is playing that's a reason that's not an excuse that's the reason he's the backup quarterback for a reason uh, so I will continue to grow, uh, and we do appreciate it. Remember, anywhere you get your audio podcast, you can get Locked On Sunbelt, iHeart, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, anywhere, Amazon. Uh, also, if you do Apple Podcasts, please rate and review. That's a help out as well. So we do appreciate you. I appreciate you. Locked On appreciate you supporting uh, the channel. All right, let's get back to it. It is Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. It is 2023 Sunbelt headlines. It's JMU probably still holding a grudge is what the headline should be. I, I, someone needs to explain the rule. Maybe we'll find it out at SEC media days and Sunbelt media days. It doesn't make any sense. If you move up, you can't go. You can't win the conference championship. Moving up, moving down, it'd be one thing. That would make more sense. But you're moving up from FCS to FBS and they don't think you can compete. I, I don't understand. Are they protecting somebody? Are they protecting the coaches? Are they protecting the kids? They should have played Troy in the Sunbelt Conference Championship game. They throttled Coastal Carolina. And when we had Kurt Segnetti on, you know, after the season, he's like, yeah, we won the East. We were the Eastern Division champions. I don't care who played in the championship game. We were the best team in the East. And deservedly so. And they can't go to a bowl game. They're 8-3. and three. They can't go to a bowl game. Come on. That, that, that's bad. That's just a stupid rule. Someone's going to have to explain that rule to me, and we're going to ask at both SEC and Sunbelt Media Days why that's the case, because they deserve to hold a grudge, right? And, you know, they're going to take it out on the teams that are preventing them from, it's not their fault, it's not those teams' fault, but they're going to take that out on them, right? Are they going to take it out again on Coastal, 47-7? to 7? Do they take it out on Marshall? Do, do they take it out on App State? And so on, right? Uh, I think... Uh, let me see here. Um, do they get the South Alabama? Let me see. No, it doesn't say here. Uh, let me see if I can get the schedule. I th think they get South Alabama. I mean, we get the composite schedule. Don't want the composite schedule. Want all the schedules. Uh, we don't have the year. Oh, we, do, we really do not have the year. I got to go through the whole thing. Let's see here. Okay. September 1st to December 23. Let's see if it's up here. All right. Go. No events to play. Okay. So let's do it the other way. All right. Because I think they're hosting South Alabama. Let me see who South Alabama has here. Uh, South Alabama football schedule. They heading out there? I probably should do. Yeah, they are. South Alabama is going to JMU September 30th. That's a huge ball game. I, I for some reason, think that South Alabama is going to win that game. I probably shouldn't. That is an enormous uh, ball game for for South Alabama and uh, the Sun Belt. You know, maybe James Madison has one of those seasons. Like I'm thinking, uh, South Alabama can have. Right? Let's go over JMU's schedule. They get Virginia. Right, that game may have been can one of those games was canceled last year because of the unfortunate tragedy that happened with uh, the Virginia uh, players. But they get Bucknell, they're at Virginia, they're at Troy, they're at Utah State. Stay hot. That is a heck of a schedule to begin the season, right? I mean, they literally, for as good as JMU is, they do get Bucknell to start off with, but they could legitimately start the season off one and three, right? They could beat Virginia, they could beat Troy, they could beat Utah State. They could also lose to those three teams. That's a tough way to start the season. Now you got three of your six game road games out of the way. Uh, and so 
then you get South Alabama at home and you know, that's where that could be a tough game for South Alabama, depending on how those first three games went. All right. Again, would not be surprised if JMU beats Virginia. Would not be surprised if they beat Troy. Would not be surprised if they go out and, you know, have some fun with Blake Anderson, former Arkansas State coach, in Utah State. But they could lose those games too, right? Those are not for sureable wins, right? They're not going to be favored against Virginia. They're not going to be favored at Troy. I'm not even sure they're going to be favored at Utah State. Doesn't mean they can't win, right? They very easily could win. They could very easily start the season 4-0. And then all of a sudden, now you're just playing Sunbelt uh, the rest of the way with UConn in there. You very well, they could very well have a great season, or it could be a good season. It could be a phenomenal season. So that schedule is tough uh, to begin with. All right, rolling along, you still got the quarterback issue for JMU. Who is replacing Todd Santeo? You got red shirt senior Jordan McLeod from Arizona or red shirt freshman Alonza Barnett of the third. Probably going with Jordan McLeod. That's probably who's going to get the gig. They went with an experienced player last year in Todd Santeo. He lit up Sunbelt defenses. It was very clear uh, when he got banged up or before that in the Louisville ball game that they missed him dearly. And uh, he made a huge difference. Can Jordan McLeod do the same thing that Todd Santeo did? and lead what is generally, you know, one of the better offenses in the Sun Belt. You know, the quarterback issue with all these teams that we're doing today, Marshall is a big deal, App State's a big deal, and certainly it is will be for uh, JMU, all right? The other one will go a little who, a little classic headlines for you. We won't get fooled again. No one's picking JMU to finish sixth. Last year, the coaches slash media – Pick JMU to finish sixth, only ahead of Old Dominion. That ain't happening again. They may as well be picked first. They very well may be picked first in the division. So no one's going to get fooled or slept on by JMU this time around. All right. Uh, they do have a difficult schedule to begin with anyways. And after their, you know, three really tough road games, they get South Alabama coming in, who I think will be the favorite for the whole thing and certainly in the West. Uh, and so we'll see how JMU does. Uh, that's going to be all three of these teams could be really good. Or I don't think JMU is going to be really bad, but they could be really good or just a little bit better than average. I don't think anyone's going to falter of these three teams, uh, Marshall App State or JMU. But, you know, JMU may think, you know, eight and three is a falter or eight and four is a falter, right? So I think they have like an eight and a half over under for their for the win. So they, people are thinking they're going to win a bunch of ball games. And yes, they finished eight and three last year because they did have that cancellation uh, due to the tragedy with Virginia. So, uh, all right, we will continue. We have one more Sunbelt headlines. It'll be Louisiana and Texas state. And then we'll do headlines for the Sunbelt uh, overall. We also have uh, Matt Stewart a week from today. He's going to be co-hosting the Sunbelt media day. So he will preview Sunbelt media days next week. Really appreciate uh, you tuning in to Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.